How much time is enough time? And what I'm speaking of is, is dating. And you may have had a, a breakup, you may have had a divorce, and may have ended badly. It may have been mutual. Either way, how much time is enough time? And I think one of the challenges that we face is we often compare ourselves to others. We compare ourselves to what we're being told by social media, the media themselves, magazine articles, blogs, our friends, our family, therapists even, and just what we've been conditioned throughout our lives to believe is the way to go about post-breakup dating. And I'm going to use myself as an example. It has been two and a half years since I have put myself out there. And that's after a rough breakup. And I was married previously many, many years ago. And I have two amazing, beautiful sons from that relationship. And I'm grateful for that. And I learned a lot. But I didn't learn enough from the marriage. And so I continued on living the way that I was conditioned to believe I should live based off of my experience of heartache, pain, suffering. And I just chose to continue dating. And I took a little time off, but I didn't take any real time to heal. And I think that is the key. It's up to you. Nobody can tell you, just like no one can tell you that you need to stop smoking. They can tell you, but it doesn't mean you're going to. You might then just hide it from them. No one can tell you what you need to do, how much time you need. You just need to move on. Time heals all wounds. No, none of that. Toss all that aside. What you need to do is take a moment and pause and reflect on the, pro the pros and the cons. What worked, what didn't work. What you sacrificed that more or less you gave up your belief system, your core values, and you sacrificed more than this other person, which created resentment, whether you believe that or not. It did create resentment and you either held it in and then became resentful through your actions, even your words, and that pushed them away. So the key in my mind is doing it on your own terms and you've got to pause. You've, you owe it to that next person, that very first person that you date, you owe it to them to heal yourself. You may not be fully healed, but at least healing some of those key triggers that have created these failed relationships. And if you continue to have failed relationships and you're continually pointing your finger at the other person and making excuses as they are the reason why the relationship ended, why these things happen, and they continue to happen to you in your relationships, I would gamble quite a bit of money to say that you are part of the cause of the end of the relationship, the self-sabotaging, uh, the insecurities, the doubt, the fears, the, all those things that cause us to question uh, the other person's true intentions and then to suspect that things may be happening that may not actually be happening because of those insecurities. And once you heal those insecurities and those unhealed traumas, you're able to see things for what they are and you are finding yourself to be less judgmental of yourself, less judgmental of others. Because I will tell you, jumping back into the dating world is scary. After two and a half years and I'm taking it slow and I am listening with intention. I'm trying to be empathetic, but I'm also focusing on, is this person a good fit based on just some simple conversations, some simple questions. And it's pretty easy to tell if you took the time to heal and you now know who you are and what you want and what you will allow, what you will accept, what boundaries you have in place. And if you stick to those, you stick to your core values, you speak your truth with love, you're gonna be on the right path and you gotta start looking for the signs. I, I, I can't tell you the number of times that I've had 1111 pop up I'm just, I'm not paying attention at all and I'm just going about my day and I happen to just randomly pick up my phone to do something and then boom, there it is. And it's typically when I'm thinking about doing something or maybe I'm talking to someone and it, it gives me that assurance that I'm on the right path. And then it may pop up 
other signs may pop up to tell me that, hey, this, you got to go with your gut. This is, something's not right here and this isn't a good fit and it's time to let them go. And so you've got to learn to not attach yourself. You've got to learn to allow that if things aren't supposed to happen, it's okay. It's not a reflection of you. It's just a reflection of you being able to tell or them being able to tell that it's not a good fit. And that's what this is all about. It's the journey. It's why it's it's how we decide who our friends are. We can't decide who our family is, but we can decide whether or not we're going to keep them in our lives if they are supporting us in ways that don't disrespect our boundaries. So it's just really something that's important. And as I'm seeing others who are in the dating world, obviously, I'm learning a lot from these encounters. And we're learning a lot from each other. And I'm trying to be as honest and forthright and empathetic as I possibly can and show appreciation and love, even if it's not meant to be, so to speak. So I hope this message finds you doing well. I hope it uh, gave you a little bit of insight onto your own life and how you should pause, reflect, make sure that you're ready before you dive into the dating world after a divorce or a tough breakup. So I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. You take care. Till next time.